Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're going to talk about a question that I just can't answer because there are so many different aspects to think about. And we're going to kind of dive into this, covering the topic about kind of solutions for this from a larger industry perspective. But the question is, Dimitri, which bank should I work for, right? So, right, we can all think about like the big name firms for like hedge funds. So you can think about, right, Everybody wants to work for like Two Sigmas. Everyone wants to work for DE Shaw, Renaissance, uh, Bridgewater, right? You can name the big, exciting, thrilling companies. And a lot of you can actually name off all the different, you know, benefits and packages and compensation. And you can go online and there's like all kinds of reviews on these companies and there's blogs and forms and like, there's a ton out there. And there's like this big branding behind a lot of these hedge funds. It's really exciting. It's really fun, right? Everybody wants to work for these firms. Uh, you can think about this also from like a general perspective of the public, right? Like when you ask high school students or college students, who do you want to work for? Uh, a lot of students are like, oh, I'd love to work for Google or Facebook or Apple, right? A lot of these tech firms start coming up. And again, you can go back through the benefits of a lot of these firms. Like people say, oh, I heard, you know, Google has these awesome like napping pods or they've got, you know, I don't know, ping pong tables, they've got free food on staff. And even if you start looking back now, so, so we'll go back into like traditional finance here a little bit, uh, you start thinking about what are the big firms, both on the consulting side. So you think like, you know, BCG, KPMG, uh, PWC, uh, they're notorious a lot of times, some of these firms, especially the more, more prestigious ones, because there are different rankings of them as well. Uh, you start thinking about like, for example, when I was at BCG, uh, there was always like snacks and fruit on the table. Uh, there was espresso machines with really nice coffees and espresso. Uh, it was just a lot more laid back. There's a lot of benefits and environment and all these kind of things that come into the fact that everybody wants to work for like specific firms. And again, when you look at finance, right? So when I was a finance student, when I was in, you know, working with MBA students and all that, uh, things you'd be thinking about is, you know, Goldman Sachs, Rothschild, um, Lazards, for example, you start thinking about these other big investment banks. And again, they're big, prestigious firms. Uh, some of them are niche, we call them boutique firms, right? Because they're smaller, but again, they have great benefits, great culture, uh, very competitive, best in the industry, right? We start thinking about all these things attributed to it. And yet when people start asking, you know, Dimitri, you talk a lot about the quant finance side on the banking side, you know, what are these big firms? Like, I haven't heard of any of them, right? Like, I know all the big names, right? You know, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, JP Morgan Chase, Goldman Sachs is in their course. There are these bigger firms, but there's not necessarily a ton of them. And yet we don't really hear a lot about like which one's the best to work for, what has the best culture, what has these great benefits. It just seems like they're these bland banks. And so a lot of people say, you know, I don't want to deal with the banks. I want to deal with something exciting and fun. I'm going to go for two sigmas. I'm going to go for DE Shaw, right? They're all excited to jump on board with these. Um, and that's great and that's wonderful. But the question is, is right, how do you select the bank? And why do we not know which banks are great to work for? And so I'm going to talk about a few of these kind of problems and issues uh, from the banking industry. Uh, the first piece here is going to come down to, I'm going to call it bank fear. So the fear that banks have. Uh, banks are terrified for some reason. Um, maybe it's a newer thing, I don't really know. But banks are a lot more nervous on you know branding or marketing that is not officially from them. And I think this is very detrimental to a lot of what's going on here. So the big piece, a lot of the drive and takeaway from this video is going to be banks need to be marketing what they have. Now, they need to be marketing what what what's what's the offer here, right? I mean, is the is the culture great? Is it competitive? Are you the biggest in the industry? Um, do you have great benefits? And I think banks on part of this is like they don't want to say because a banks don't want to pay very much, especially in the quant finance realm. So it's not a big surprise here. Uh, banks want to pay as little as possible, and so some banks do pay more, and so a lot of times you get better talent but it's not always that case. It depends on positions a lot of times. It depends on departments. It depends on you know managers. And so they don't wanna necessarily mention that. And banks are very rigid and stuck in the old past. And so I think the other piece is they don't wanna essentially broadcast like, you know, there's Google and Facebook and Apple and then there's hedge funds. There's all these great jobs out there. Right? We need really smart, bright talent. So we're gonna go look for it at the best universities. And of course you can still pull it because there's still a lot of people wanting to come into the quant finance realm, even on the banking side. Um, 
but they just don't broadcast it. And then I find a lot of banks complain like, well, you know, we don't have, you know, X, Y, and Z in a candidate. And I've interviewed, you know, this many people. And yes, there's you know, tons of people wanting to fill this role, but I just can't find it. Um, I think the big solution is marketing, but to solve the marketing problem that we're gonna have here, banks need to up the, I'm not gonna say compensation per se, but they need to up what you are offering to the candidate. So essentially it is compensation, but I don't necessarily mean just like dollars, right? So, you know, salary and bonus. Banks need to be offering a lot more flexibility. So one of the big takeaways, and one of the reasons it's so challenging uh, to explain which banks are better or not better, comes down to the fact that banks don't really have a good solid quant culture. And most banks, to be honest with you, don't have a solidified culture in general. It's very fluid and it's very flexible. And this is great on some hand, on some instances, right? And it's not so good on others. And what do I mean by this? So for me, I always look to work for the best manager, okay? I'm not looking for the best bank. So when I go for an interview, what I'm really interested in when I'm interviewing with someone, um, and I'm the job candidate, not the interviewer, I'm looking to see like who you are as a person, who you hired on your team, and what are those people like, right? That's what I'm concerned about. I don't really care if it's, you know, Bank of America, and JP Morgan Chase, you know, Fifth Thirds, Comerica, it doesn't matter which bank it is. I wanna know who I'm working for. And the reason for this is that a lot of times, so I don't advertise this, I have had massive arguments with managers at multiple firms um, fighting for the right to work from home. So now we're all kind of laughing about it, like, well, yeah, Dimitri, everybody works from home. But this is before the big um, pandemic and the working from home normality here. So I would have to fight for that as a benefit, right? And I even took a job. So when I took one of the jobs I had, uh, I made it clear, I will not take this job if I cannot work from home at minimum two to three days a week. And often I'll be working four to five days a week. I'm just letting you know that, right? You have meetings and everything, that's great. I'll be here physically in the office, you know, interacting with everybody. But when you want actual quant work done, you guys want top quality work, I can do it. And you can see my track record and you can talk to my references. But that being said, I need to work at least two to three days a week. And so the majority of my career, I've worked from home two to three days a week before the pandemic. Again, these are benefits I've worked out personally with managers. These are not things that we worked out with HR. So of course, you know, HR is gonna be upset at different banks and you can't offer this employee a different benefit than this employee. And then, right, and they don't wanna market this because if you, as soon as you say, you know, Dimitri is getting special treatment and he's working from home, um, then people start saying, oh, well, if we can't work from home, why is that? You know, I wanna work from home. Banks have just been too rigid on what they do and don't offer for benefits. If you want to have a great brand as a bank and you want to bring in just top talent and you want to be able to interview far less people and find good talent, I think there needs to be a lot more emphasis placed on the branding component. So again, what benefits do you offer? Let's make it public. Let's make it exciting. Let's draw people in. Um, the other piece too is going to come into compliance here. Compliance and legal. So as I kind of mentioned, right, banks don't like when people talk about them. So it's kind of weird. Uh, for example, for me, I have a YouTube channel. I have to disclose my YouTube channel and my podcast to the banks that I work at. So every bank I've worked at has required that I disclose it to them. So it just means, you know, this is what I have. I've had banks that have bring, brought in legal and compliant staff to essentially have a meeting with me to discuss it because they don't fully understand what I'm talking about, what topics are covered. Um, they wanna make sure that I understand I am not allowed to speak on behalf of any bank. So no matter which bank I'm working at, I can't say, you know, this bank recommends this. Completely get that, right? That makes common sense, right? I do not represent any bank. I do not represent banks I work at. Um, but that being said, right, they get really nervous and fickle when you start trying to say like, oh, you know, I talk about these sorts of projects. And they go, well, is it proprietary? Well, no, it's common sense. You can look it up online. They go, well, you know, you need to be extremely careful. You know, you don't say too much about this, that, or the other. And I think part of this comes down again, back to like an HR side and a legal side. So again, HR is upset when you find out uh, you have some employees that are making buku bucks, other employees might not be making as much. Again, this does not have to do with the ranks within a department. A lot of times this comes to the conflict of different departments, right? So somebody's watching online, they're working accounting, they find out a quant makes significantly more money. Uh, they don't realize, you know, the education, that it requires to be a quant requires a lot more. So that individual invests more time and money and tuition and fees and all this stuff at universities. Uh, there's just different skill sets. And so if you start 
advertising and branding this, it creates an HR problem. I don't think it really matters, to be honest with you. I think banks should just be more open and honest. If they can create great culture and great compensation for each different department, uh, you can actually get over that hurdle. And people that are accountants will love to come to work for your firm as an accountant because it's one of the best options out there to be an accountant. Uh, again, if you wanted to be a quant like us, what I do for a living, uh, again, you need to be able to brand to compete with those different roles here. But again, HR gets a little bit cold feet here and they complain a little bit, so they don't like to brand this. Uh, the other component too is going to be the legal aspect, right? Again, if an employee comes out and says, I represent whatever bank, and then they say, you know, make some statement, it could be ridiculous, could be absurd. Uh, and then, you know, they have to go back and try to do damages. Bank can get sued for it because you're an employee there. You might not have any sort of, you know, I don't know, ties to it or any approvals. Again, you'll probably get sued by your bank as well because you said something. But there are all these kind of nuances and hurdles with banks and they try to avoid it. I think this is the number one reason they don't do the branding and the marketing. Uh, when you look at, again, so a bank is massive organization, a thousand, typically 10 plus thousand employees. Uh, some of them have 100,000, I think, or more globally. Uh, you start looking at this though, compared to like the hedge funds, right? Hedge funds are small, uh, specialized firms. So they don't really have as big of an issue with like the compensation and the HR perspective, right? Because you're all working towards the same thing. Compensation's probably known a little bit more. Whereas when you have a large, massive bank or organization, you have different countries, different departments, there's a lot of complaints in there as well. Um, so that's kind of part of it. Google, I think, done an amazing job, as well as Facebook and Apple, all the big names in tech. You know, really drawing in talent. I think, again, the, the big key here is not the compensation, it's all these other benefits that you get, right? So the fact that there's food, like for example, when I had a BCG, when you have fruit, nice fresh fruit and snacks and stuff all free and available to employees, that's amazing, right? I don't have to pay for it. I feel like the company cares about me. Uh, when they have yoga Wednesday nights, on Wednesday nights right on the top of the roof, uh, you know, like, wow, great benefits. Again, I don't have to go if I don't want to, but it's a fun free activity. Uh, again, great coffee. So a lot of banks do offer free coffee and beverages and things, but they don't mention that a lot of times. Uh, again, in consulting, I had free beverages as well. But this is what comes challenging though for the banking side, right? So hopefully the message from this from banks is you can do it, you need to get creative, you need to look at the benefits and things employees want, and don't create fake nonsensical garbage because employees see right through it. Um, I'm not gonna get into that too much, but employers and banks have been offering a lot of these educational training programs to really up and build your career. Uh, a, that's not a benefit for me personally, like I don't really see a lot of benefit in it because I can go learn those on my own. And two, banks never follow through on the skill set. So yes, I took 500 million you know, LinkedIn classes and Coursera classes, which the bank recommended, and then an employee doesn't get promoted and then they're upset because guess what? They didn't get promoted and yet they did exactly what you told them to do. So these are what I'm gonna call as fake benefits. So don't offer fake benefits for it. Uh, those are some pieces. Now, to answer the original question here, so kind of we've deviated somewhat and talked about the issues with marketing and branding and banks and why they need to do more of it, why they need to create brands and culture. Um, why it's so hard for me though to recommend which banks to work at is it depends who you're working for. And as I mentioned before, right, the manager makes a massive difference, okay? So banks, again, have not done a stellar job on culture here. So one of my favorite CEOs of all times is Lloyd Blankfein from Goldman Sachs, who's now retired and everything. Um, I disagree with much of his ideology and his ideas and thoughts and things, but he did an amazing job at running Goldman Sachs. He set a very strict culture. Everybody knew the standards. Uh, it was very well laid out. He's one of the few sharks on Wall Street. So he's one of those CEOs I feel like that would stand up and say things regardless if it was popular or not. He did what was best for the firm. We just don't see that sort of culture these days with firms. We also see a lot of firms kind of have shuffling of employees and executives and senior management, and it makes it extremely challenging to set a culture internally to do that. Um, so as advice here, right, in general, how do you find those banks, just to wrap this whole video up and why it's so challenging, uh, is go out and try to find network contacts, talk to people, Again, try to figure out who's on these teams. So one thing I do, which a lot of managers don't, I don't think realize, when I interview with you and you call and you wanna chat and you're looking to hire someone, uh, I go out of my way to figure out who you know, like for example on LinkedIn that I already know, and I call and ask them and say, hey, I'm interviewing with this person at this bank, what do you think of them? 
right? They can tell me like, oh, this guy's very demanding, but he's extremely fair, or you know, this 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 boss, this woman, uh, she has great benefits. She's been amazing to work with. Um, she's a little bit strict, but again, we have great success as a team. She's kind of an all-star on you know that division or that department. And so trying to get that inside information is always crucial and important. And the other piece here that makes it so challenging is a lot of these teams are extremely small. So quant finance is not this massive, massive industry with thousands and thousands of employees, like a lot of people think. Uh, so it's challenging to get in because there's not a lot of spots. The turnover though is kind of weird where you end up hopping between firms. So this is really noticeable when you see an executive quit because they will hop to another firm but the reason they hop to that firm is because somebody else used to be in that seat. And so you kind of play like musical chairs as people kind of hop around and bounce from firm to firm to kind of move and shift and fill these positions here. So again, if you want to find a good bank to work for or a good job, I would go out and look for people on LinkedIn, talk to people, network, interview. Uh, again, my circle, my view is only so big. So I can only see so far and know so many people. Again, it's not huge, so you kind of get murmurings but again, it's hard to recommend a specific bank. And if one of those people quit and they go to a different firm, uh, right? I can't say go work at bank ABC because it's amazing. It's more like go work for you know this specific person because that person's amazing. So that's kind of answering that question a little bit, guys. It's challenging. Um, I would love to see banks do better marketing, add different benefits, uh, try to actually work with the quants instead of you know making this nonsensical business environment that's so rigid. Uh, with so many compliance issues and legal issues and HR issues and everything. Uh, and they make it so rigid to the point that it benefits no one and you essentially have no culture. And then when you have these shifting these executives as well, uh, the culture changes significantly as well. And a lot of the toxic pieces from past management get stuck behind. Uh, but typically a lot of the great impactful things that were amazing end up getting swapped out because people are trying to save money uh, or change things to you know, be special or fancy or do something different. So. Anyways, that's kind of my takeaway. I wish banks would do marketing and branding. I wish they would reach out to their marketing departments or even like people like me to kind of help them kind of guide them through this. Um, also, if you're gonna look for jobs though, do networking, that's really the only way to do it. It's kind of a top secret area in branding. There doesn't seem to be any big brands that are consistent across banks. So anyways, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and as always, until next time.